Okay then, all right. What's going on guys, Brandon Harden here. Hope you're having a great day. Today is the 21st of April and we're gonna be reacting to a video that Greg Doucette made on a post that I made for April Fools because about two weeks ago, I made a post on Instagram which was a picture of me getting my pro card with Callum next to me and I basically announced for April Fools that I was gonna be stopping prep because I was too small. I'm gonna read the post for some context. The caption goes, this is the end of the line. This prep is over and I won't be making my debut this year. I'm too small, had a really bad off season and I think it's best to take some time to grow to actually be competitive. I'm sorry for everyone who believed in me. This is now my second time ending prep. Maybe I'll never be ready. Who knows? Dot, dot, dot. Now, obviously, I literally posted a meme in the comments, which was like a smiley face. I thought it was really, really obvious to most people. But for some reason, I mean, Greg commented on the post itself, basically saying like, this is probably the right decision. You should definitely stop prep, like completely missing the fact that it was an April Fool's joke. But nevertheless, he goes ahead and makes a full YouTube video talking about how I made the right decision to end prep because of the fact that he also believes that I'm way too small. We're going to watch his video. We're going to react to it because obviously, currently, I am seven weeks out from my next show. This is going to be my pro debut sort of run. We've picked the shows. I'm also going to be announcing in this video which shows I'm going to be competing in because I actually messaged the IFBB yesterday to request to compete in some various shows all over the world that I literally cannot wait to do. I can't believe I was requesting the contracts to literally enter these shows yesterday. So I literally can't wait. Like I said, we're seven weeks out now. I'm going to put some pictures on the screen. These were my check-in pictures that I sent to Callum this morning. As of right now, we are 223.6 pounds as of these pictures right here. Lines are coming in now that I haven't seen this prep. My hamstrings are starting to show just a little bit. And the one that I was most impressed with was my back because one of the main things I wanted to bring up this year was the density of my back because everyone that's top five in the Olympia right now has incredible backs. And I wanted to make sure that I was obviously building over the next few years to be able to one day be at the standard of these guys that are at the top. Of course, we have a lot of work left to do. I'm probably not going to be competitive when it comes to the top placings at the Olympia for at least another three or four years. Like I've got a lot of density and mass to build but seeing some of the progress that's been made over the last year and a half off season now we're on prep and i'm starting to lose the body fat to show through what i've built i'm really really proud i'm really really happy and no greg video is going to change that and i'm going to react to it today and give you my opinion on exactly what he said actually haven't seen the entirety of the video because when I watched it the first time I kind of skimmed through it because I was actually in the middle of a workout and I, someone messaged me and said Greg's made a video about you and I was like halfway through a session so I just skimmed through it for a few minutes and just got the like the gist of what he was saying so we're going to watch it for the first time properly together right now but before we do press play I want to let you know that on the hard body store right now there's a sale it's been running since Friday and ends tonight at midnight on Sunday everything is 20 to 40 percent off it's because we hit 10,000 followers on the hard body squad TikTok so if by chance when you're done watching this video if you want to head to the first link down below in the description you go straight to the store and pick up any equipment or clothing while you can while it's on sale until midnight tonight let's get into the video by the way sorry if the lighting goes like dark and light sometimes the clouds move by and the sun starts to shine through i actually freaking love this setup right now i've got like a huge desk in this airbnb if you have watched the last few videos you'll know exactly where we're staying in worcester but this is temporary while we finish prep we're basically flying out to canada about six days before the first show i'm going to tell you what shows we're going to do at the end of reacting to this because there is four in total they're not official yet because the ifbb have to send me the contracts i have to sign them and then they have to accept me into the show like you can't just like go online and be like i'm doing that one pay because you pay a membership for the ifbb and then when you've paid your yearly membership you just ask for the contract and you just do the show essentially it's my first time doing this sort of thing i've never like i said this is my first time competing as a pro i even asked in the email if there was anything i needed to know because obviously it's very different when you compete as an amateur you, you need to buy your tan buy the photo package pay to enter the show all these sort of things but now none of that's actually a thing which is really 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 interesting and i can't wait to explain experience it and I can't wait to share it with you as well because the more I experience I want to share it with you and then hopefully one day you may be doing it yourself or maybe you are doing it yourself and maybe you could teach me something but hopefully one day you'll be in the same position and you'll be doing your first pro show as well although the lighting might be going dark and light it's 
it's pretty good lighting to be honest i'm not too mad about it all right so now let's get into the video today's video brandon harding ends his prep it's the second time in a row that he's had to back out of competition and what is his excuse this time he is too small so what he's referencing in regards to the second time dropping out of doing a prep there was a time six months ago where i started a prep but i was going to be doing the prep only to compete in one show and after a little bit of thought after five weeks on the prep like it just didn't make sense to me and me and callum had a call and we were like, you know what? To be honest, putting your body through this much stress and the anabolics that you're going to be taking just to compete in one show, it was in Austria. So it felt like I had a special place in my heart to go back to have got the card in Austria to then do the pro debut in Austria. So to me, it made a lot of sense in the beginning, but I feel like I massively jumped the gun on doing it. Also, I didn't leave myself enough time to get in the condition that I wanted to get in to be at the standard that I know I need to be. When I competed last, I left myself 13 weeks and it was just enough time to get in condition, but I left myself 13. 13 weeks this time that I quit and it was nowhere near enough time. I took the off season a little bit too heavily, had a few too many cheat meals. It became very clear that I wasn't gonna be ready in time. So not only did I not wanna take all the anabolics to do one show, but I genuinely didn't think that I had enough time to get ready in time to be the condition that I knew I needed to be at. If I crash dieted and tried to lose body fat as fast as humanly possible, it might've been possible. There's no way I would've looked anywhere near as good as I should look at the sort of, especially considering the guys I'm gonna be against, I need to literally look the best I can possibly look without any mistakes. So it just felt like it wasn't the right prep to do. Took a bit more time to grow, waited another three to four months to start prep again. And now we're on this journey. I'm so freaking glad we did because the lineup that we have now and the amount of shows I can do rather than just competing in the final show of the year makes so much more sense. Brandon Harding is about six foot two and in the off season about 250 pounds. But the last time he competed, he was in the 190s. And at six foot two- Just to correct that, I'm 184 centimeters meters so just under 6'1 and I weigh 260 pound on the well the heaviest I've ever been is 264 pound but that was pushing it like I was trying to walk up the stairs I was getting out of breath just as tall as Wesley Vizzers and in the professional division if you're six foot two you can weigh over 240 pounds on stage shredded now Brandon Harding is big he's about 250 pounds but that's in his off season and his last competition he was in the 190s even if he puts on a ton of muscle let's call it 20 pounds, 20 pounds of muscle since his last competition. He is in fact still too small. In this part, I'm not too sure why Greg's concentrating so much on my personal weight because there's people that literally compete in top 10 Olympia that when they're on stage, they're 180 pound. And my last stage weight was 205 pound, 25 pound above some Olympians. Granted, these guys are quite short and I completely agree that I do have to fill out a lot more to be competitive at the top. But just because I'm not as heavy as the guys, top five in the world doesn't mean I shouldn't do a pro show. Like that concept to me is just absolutely ridiculous. Imagine if he stands on stage at six foot two standing perhaps 215 maybe 220 pounds he's going to be giving off 20 pounds more of muscle to a guy like wesley Vizers. and so what chance does he have well i'll tell you none as in zero and so rather than continuing to diet down and lose that precious muscle he's decided to take in another off season put on more muscle than last time and compete once he's ready to do damage as a pro the way he's sort of spinning this is just because i'm not as heavy as the guys at the top i should just give up and I should just not compete and take a three to four year off season and miss out on three to four years of experience competing as a pro. Like if I never know what I look like next to these guys, what am I going to aim towards? I'm just going to be mindlessly building muscle for years and years and years, scared to step on stage, giving myself some mental disorder like most bodybuilders have that you're never going to be good enough to step on stage, which results in a lot of people literally never competing in their entire lives because they don't know they're going to be good enough. If I had this mentality when I was 19 years old, when I did my first show, I would have never stepped on stage, but I genuinely knew that if I got as lean as I could possibly get, even at my first show, I would still stand a chance. And in that show, I got second. Granted, the guy that beat me was a lot bigger, but the experience I gained from that first show was beyond anything that any coach or any YouTube video could teach me just because I was doing it myself. And that's exactly what I believe going through my first pro run will teach me. Standing next to guys that I literally dreamed of going against and gaining so much experience from what I'm about to go through and knowing, having visual representation of what I'm going to literally look like next to some of the biggest guys in the world and granted i might not be against some of the top guys at the olympia i might be against bottom of the barrel pros it might be the other end of the spectrum i might be
be against Miracle Bear. I might be against Ramon. I, I have no idea who's going to be doing these shows. And to be honest, I'm not doing the research into knowing because I don't want to know who I'm going to be against. All I'm going to do is do my very best to be the best that I've ever been, go to all of these shows and do exactly what I love to do, which is step on stage, compete and showcase something that has been my biggest passion for the last 11 years of my life. I'm 27 now. I've been going to the gym since I was 16 years old and I can't wait to do this. When you're a successful amateur getting in first or second place at almost every competition you've ever entered, it can be an eye-opening experience to compete as a professional bodybuilder. Just because you're not big enough to win doesn't mean you shouldn't try. And so this brings up a point that I want to make. Imagine Brandon Harding not thinking he's big enough to compete as a pro. I appreciate what Greg just said because that's pretty much what I said earlier. You don't have to be the biggest and heaviest guy on stage to do well if you are the most conditioned and you are like you know presenting symmetry and your posing is fantastic and all these things it can win you placings that you wouldn't otherwise get by just having a physique that looks good like you know sometimes the presentation and the smile and the way you orchestrate yourself on stage if you look like you're loving it up there there's a good chance you're going to get a few placings ahead than if you looked miserable on stage and you had no enthusiasm about you imagine brandon harding not thinking he's big enough to compete as a pro if brandon harding who's six foot two and 250 pounds the off season, competing at close to 200 pounds, show ready, perhaps at 5% body fat. If that's not big enough, what chance do the rest of us have? How do you think he's going to get better? Does anyone believe that Bran Harding is 100% natural? He's already using, perhaps abusing, performance enhancing drugs. I don't know why Greg said that part in the video because when he used to coach me, when we had our little like spiel, <laughs> it was like a, a collaboration where he was going to coach me and I didn't agree with his coaching style because he basically just sent me a cookbook and he was like, you know, pick your meals and do your thing and you know will assess and i was like this is not the style of coaching that i want so it ended up ending quite ugly but he literally was the one telling me what to take so i don't know <laughs> this is why it didn't make any sense he's gonna have to push the supplements even more gonna have to take more risks perhaps get negative blood work and so what chance does he have and i know it's easy for me to say that it's not all about winning that you just do your best and should be proud of your accomplishments and of course you can but is there not something that could be done imagine if there was another category in the ifbb i kind of appreciate what he said there if brandon doesn't have a chance what chances anyone have i feel like he was blowing smoke at my ass when he said this because you know so many people have great physiques and have a better shot at doing this than me but to be honest the part of competing that i massively appreciate about my frame and about my height is the fact that my ceiling is so high because I'm pretty sure my cap is around 234 to 237 pound and I'm 223 pound right now like that means over the next four years I can mindlessly grow I can take my off seasons to a level where I just pack on so much muscle and I don't have to worry about never making weight because I will always make weight it's gonna take me about four years to gain 15 to 20 pound of muscle to be anywhere near the cap to be honest so like it's it's one thing that I'm very grateful for and I can just grow and grow and grow over the next three to four years and, well, just see what happens, really. Would you not want to see an extra category where Brandon Harding doesn't have to put on 40 pounds of muscle, but only 20, and then could compete at the top of the weight limit and have a chance to compete at the Olympia? Because for me personally, I don't think that guys need to get any bigger. Every time they keep upping the weight categories or rewarding greater size and so on. This was the time when I was out, just as prep sort of started and I saw Greg like in a club, we had a great catch up. Like it was actually really good to see him. We spoke about life. We spoke about all the things he was dealing with in his relationship and things that I've been going through. It was just a really, really good time to be honest. So, you know, we do get along, although he's like making this sort of video. Granted, off social media, we actually have a good laugh. Did you not see me interviewing him at the Arnold Classic? Look at the size of this guy in comparison to myself. Wesley Vissers is massive. Like Miracle Bear, Ramon, Chris, all these guys guys are absolutely humongous the level of growth hormone that i know these guys are on like six to eight to ten iu i've been taking four just up to six and they've been doing that for so many years this sort of mass and size is just the accumulation of time it's not something that can be achieved over six months to a year to two years this takes like 10 years to get at a very high anabolic level it's something that's not just so easily achieved so yes ever since getting the card a year and a half ago i have been trying to grow as much as possible on the off season and it's been a year and a half do that again and again and again and eventually we'll be at the stage like, i'm not sure how old wesley visses is but i'm pretty sure I, if i was to guess he's around like 32 33 years old so give me five years just give me five years and we'll see because i'm not gonna stop maybe i'll never be ready 
Who knows? And so it is, of course, possible that he's just making a joke, that he doesn't think he's too small, that it's just April Fool's and so on. But let's assume it's Finally. true. Because after all, this it. could be true to almost any competitor out there. Whether you're an amateur, professional, you oftentimes are feeling too small. If you're a powerlifter, you're feeling too weak. Just because you're not the biggest, the strongest in the entire field doesn't mean you don't need to compete. If it was only the best of the best at competing, only one person would compete. Only Chris Bumstead would show up. And so, of course, I understand that when you compete, you compete to win. You compete to beat your other opponents. What you really want to be doing is competing with yourself and beating yourself. Your personal best, if you can top that, you are in fact a winner. I love how he switches the narrative because obviously in the beginning he was like, Brandon's too small, he shouldn't compete. And now he's like justifying himself by protecting what he said is in like, just because you're too small doesn't mean you shouldn't compete. Maybe he had a thought while he was recording the video, like, man, I'm going to get a lot of hate for this, like saying that no no one should compete if they're not at the top. I'm going to assume that he's protecting himself with this and I'm going to assume his opinion is well versed and he actually does have like a full circle view of the situation and in, in, in the scope of the fact that you should still compete to gain experience even if you're not yet ready to be at the top level. You should still do it. And if that's the case, then I totally agree. The sport is gone sideways, man. The fact a guy your size is too small is outrageous. You look unreal, dude. Keep grinding. And so to me, that's sums up everything. Brandon Harding is a beast, but remember, he was 40 plus pounds below his weight limit when he turned pro. 40 plus pounds. Let that sink in. Whoever left that comment, you're an absolute legend. I really appreciate that. But also what Greg's saying here, like, yes, the, the cap is so high for classic guys is in like, they made this so that the IFBB, when it comes to the, the Olympia, could actually have a freak show. The best in the world. It shouldn't be something that anyone can just do. It shouldn't be something that anyone can go to the Olympia and just be great. You know, it's for literally the 0.01% of the world. It's a show for the people that have worked tirelessly and dedicated their entire life to something. So yeah, I, I don't necessarily agree with Greg what you're saying here that like they should make the weight cap lower because that's just giving people an opportunity that haven't worked for that opportunity yet they're just going to give it to anyone it just means that anyone as a pro or an amateur can compete competitively because they make the weight cap so low that the bigger guys that could actually beat these other guys aren't even going to get the chance to be able to compete I like where the weight currently is I like that I have somewhere to aim towards and I'm, I'm so far away from it because it gives me something to fight for it gives me something to work towards and I can't wait to be heavy enough to be at the top but i genuinely know that in time it will happen eventually i just don't know when it's going to happen but it will so that's pretty much it for the video that's what greg covered and again he reiterated what he wants in terms of like classic releasing a lower category so like classic small or like classic junior you know how bodybuilding has like open class and then it has 212 he's basically saying that classic should have the same thing all i know that the shows i'm going to be competing in this year are as follows on june 9th in toronto canada we're going to be doing the toronto pro super show so that's the first show of the season one week later we're going to be flying from toronto all the way to alicante spain for the show on june 16th which is the m pro classic spain pro show but that's the second show two weeks later so now we get a bit of chill time we get to assess what's happened over the first two shows there's a two week gap period for the 30th of june in limerick island where Stu lives the guy that i live with he started off uh, about a year and a half ago being my pa and now he's the manager of hard Body and he helps me run the entire business that's where he lives it's like 10 minutes away from his house so i can obviously like visit where he's from spend time with his friends like have a really really good positive experience so that's on the 30th and then one week later we're going to fly from limerick all the way to portugal which is the oh by the way it's the muscle contest island pro that's what the third one's called and then the fourth one is called mr big evolution portugal pro july 7th and that's north portugal i've spent so much time in the algarve flied into Faro. i literally grew up as a kid in portugal because me and my family spent so many summers there when i was like in middle school and high school so although i'm not going to be in the location where i know so well i still can't wait because when all the shows are said and done i'll be flying down to albufera and having like a bit of a holiday with the boys and everything that we go with because i got Stu coming out with me and some of the hard body athletes too we're just going to have a really nice chill time afterwards enjoy the sun and let the four pro shows that we're doing this year all sink in live in the moment really because that's all this experience is like granted my life has changed a lot recently i'm obviously back in the uk now some things have happened in terms of like you know my life shifting in a different 
different direction. In all honesty, like I couldn't be happier right now. My head is so clear. I'm so generally happy. I spend so much time with my friends and my family and I can concentrate on all the things I need to grow hard body to the extent that I know that it can be one day. The dream is there and it's literally only a few years away. It's been around for about three and a half years now and where it's going is beyond my imagination. So like I said, if you do want to get anything from the sale, it does end at midnight tonight. That's going to be pretty much it for the video. I haven't done many sit down talking videos on this prep because I feel like I've tried to share as much of the journey day to day as I can when I do pick up the camera and record. That's going to be it for the video. I really, really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, drop a like, turn up post notifications, subscribe if you haven't already because it really helps the channel grow. This was episode 12 of Hard Body Shredding and I'll see you guys in episode 13. Peace.